are in the booth at uh, the show here in Philadelphia, and I am joined by uh, someone I just recently connected with. We actually have a meeting scheduled for next week, um, but it just happened that she's here, so she's going to jump on the live podcast. It's Sarah Judd from uh, Webster Fulfillment, right? Yes. Yes. So, Sarah, welcome to the show. How, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Excited yeah, to be yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Where, where are you coming from? I hear the accent. Auburn, Alabama. Oh, okay. Got asked right. that a few times. Today. Yes, yeah, yeah. Way down there. All right, cool. Um, so how, how's it going so far this week for you? It's good. It's yeah. really great. Lot, made a lot of connections. Got to hear about some new technology that I think we can implement in our processes and improve nice, our warehouse nice. and processes. All right, cool. And, and those processes are for what? What do you guys do at Webster Fulfillment? Yeah, fulfillment? we're a, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're a 3PL specializing in e-commerce fulfillment. So a lot of D2C and specifically small pack parcel, flat pack apparel. Um, we've recently gotten into some bigger, bulkier items, mm. pallet in, pallet out, B2B. But really our, our uh, niche and our area of expertise is that small pack apparel. Okay, interesting, interesting. And I, I'm curious, you know, the I'm always curious when I talk to kind of these um, – uh, more independent 3PLs, right? Like, I mean, what's the story there? How did you get into this this business? Yeah, so um, we were kind of born from from a brand that we were fulfilling with and, and for and realized that there was really a need for accurate, quick fulfillment, um, really a more boutique-style 3PL. Mm -hmm. A lot of bigger 3PLs are, are kind of coming, coming to and really taking over the market, but they don't really value customers that have smaller order um, profiles. And so kind of in our, our process of looking for a 3PL, we kind of made our own 3PL in a way. So, oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you have a product too? Or? Not, no, not me. Okay. Oh, so what, I mean, how did you originally start? Because you said you, you guys were looking for it. A 3PL, right? Yeah, not not me specifically, but a brand. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, interesting. Okay, yeah. I All just right. uh, I just help with operations, day to day operations. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting, and I think the world, you know, of these kind of boutique independent 3PLs is, is certainly, you know, it's growing and growing. So, uh, I'm curious, like, you know, how are you seeing that market now, and, and you know, what does it look like for? Uh, for you guys, I mean, do you see this as uh, a lot of competition coming into the market or is it healthy for the market, for, for the 3PL market? Yeah, I think it's, again, going back to the boutique 3PL, that's mm. that's definitely a healthier space where customers get to feel more empowered and more heard and have better customer interaction with their 3PL. Mm -hmm. So boutiques are really taken over or boutique 3PLs are really taken over the 3PL industry in that regard. Um, but as far as like competition with other boutique 3PLs, that, that's not a, a huge thing. I think um, making those connections and learning from each other and growing with each other in this yeah. kind of new and upcoming um, portion of 3PLs is really important. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's uh, it's interesting because it's like become a, a little community too, right? Yeah. You go for Phil.com, yes. right? right? Yes. Phil.com community. Uh, very associated yeah. with them. And they've been awesome with their community groups and discussions yes. and just... Um, and the yeah. knowledge that they share with us. Yeah, yeah, and let's uh, and let's say congratulations to Joe and Carissa, right? Yes. They got mar married yes. this week or this weekend, I think, in Jamaica yeah. or something. So very nice. Uh, so you know, it's definitely a great a great community there. And I, I'm curious, you know, too. You guys do uh, and the reason we connected, right? Is because you do some on demand printing as well. Tell yes. us how that works. Yeah, it's actually another thing uh, that I like to touch on. It, it's like a, a perk of working with us is that mm -hmm. we do have value add services that a lot of times. When you want to enhance your product and set it apart in the marketplace from your competitors, you've got to go outsource that to another party. And so there's just mm -hmm. so much more cost associated with that with shipping it to that person and then getting it back and then fulfilling yeah. it. We actually offer services in-house. So we have embroidery, a type of screen printing mm -hmm. called DTG, Interesting. a bunch of other ones. Those are kind of our two main ones. And so print on demand is huge. It, it really yeah. helps not having to tie inventory up into designs that may or may right. not be a hot seller. Um, but we also do have the ability to print in stock, too, because we see that some customers want to stock style mm -hmm. so that they can ship instantly. Um, and then some customers that really want it to be truly when an order is placed, that's when you create it. Interesting. So so from a brand's perspective, um, and, and I'll say, I'll disclose, I, I may be a potential customer here, but uh, we're looking to do some podcast merch, actually. So, um, you know, for from that perspective of the brand, I, I mean, how, like, what's the turnaround time? So, like, you have a customer and the customer goes on my store and... You know, they place an order for uh, a T-shirt and then you guys are going to print it and, and ship it out. So what's like kind of the, the lead time to make that happen? Yeah, if it's some that we printed in stock and they're yeah. already ready same day placed before yeah. 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. If it's something that's more made to order, 
that really depends on our early conversations with the customer. Like, okay. what are their SLAs? What are what yeah. do they want from us? We are really big on personalized fulfillment plans. So mm. we know fulfillment's not a one size fits all. We know that each brand requires different um, different demands, and their customers also require different demands. And mm. so um, we work with our clients and, and develop a good timeline that works for us, mm. them, and their customer. Interesting, interesting. So, so I, I mean, I guess uh, I guess my question is like, you know. Uh, how long does it take to do an on-demand print? Like the order comes in and is printed the same day and then shipped same day or it's like shipped the next day? Yeah, yeah. Um, it can. You know, it, it really depends on volume that day, right. how many okay. orders we've placed. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not unheard of that we receive mm-hmm. a custom order and then get it shipped same day or next day within 24 hours. Oh, really interesting. That's, that's pretty fantastic. And I think it, it makes a lot of difference too, I'm sure, for, for you guys on the operational perspective of how much uh, space is being taken up by inventory, right? Yes. So that's a big deal. So I'm interested to know too, you know, coming here uh, as a as a 3PL, I mean, what, what technologies are, are you guys really looking at for your operation and, and what's interesting to you? Yeah, so we currently have robots in-house that we use um, to help with our oh, okay. picking and packing mm-hmm. process. And then we also have some automation in the receiving process. But one thing that's been pretty interesting to learn while I've been here this week is I talked with, someone who has um, a device that measures and weighs products as they come in and also Mm -hmm. outbound. And so that's something that super interested in that I think can really help with our processes. And then another thing that I talked with someone about this week was taking the picture of what's actually packed Mm -hmm. when the order goes out and storing it so that if a customer comes back and says, hey, we only received two of our three things, we have that photo evidence that Hey, we did ship all of them. Interesting, interesting. And, and are you willing to tell us what what kind of robotics you're using? Yeah, we use Locust robots. Oh, Locust. Okay, yeah. interesting. So, so when you went down that kind of automation path and, and robotics path, I mean, why did you end up um, going towards Locust? And kind of what was the what was the initial thought on like, hey, we need to go after some robotics or automation? Yeah, we have a, a large facility, and so. Um, it ended up being a lot of wear and tear on our associates' bodies as far as mm-hmm. how far they're having to walk and, and the carts they're having to lug around the warehouse with all of the, the inventory for the orders. And so our goal, I think like most people, is not to eliminate mm-hmm. human interaction. Right. That's not a goal of ours. Um, but obviously we want to increase productivity and um, yeah, decrease human error. And so we went with Locust Robots because they are an assisted picking device. Mm-hmm. They don't actually pick the product themselves, but they rely on our associates but it just cut down how far our associates have to walk and then it went from carrying a heavy cart to just walking up, putting right. it in the bin, scan it, and it goes to the next Spend location. So, way, yeah. yeah. And it's just been awesome for reducing those human errors that we all have because it works 100% off the scan. So. Yeah, humans are the problem, right? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> it always comes down to the human. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's really interesting, and, and it's great to hear that you guys are, are growing and, and investing in technology to be able to continue to, to scale and, and grow mm-hmm. your business and, and be more successful for your, your clients and the brands that you help. Um, so I, I'm curious um, in that regard, too. I mean, as you start to look at you've, you've automated and brought robotics into the, the picking process, are you looking at any automation or robotics for other parts of your processes, too? Yeah, I think a huge opportunity right now is the receiving process. And so that's one reason I uh, made my way over to a booth here to talk specifically about that, the wait and dim that I just mentioned. Right. Because things like that take a lot of, of time and effort and um, kind of goes back to the human error, you know, as a read a tape measure or whatnot, like mm, that's yeah. just not easy. And so it actually takes one second for that product that I just looked at to get all that information that right now takes several minutes sometimes yeah yeah it can take a long time to get those dimensions and like you said you know somebody reads the tape measure maybe somebody reads it as centimeters yes. somebody reads it as inches or maybe someone thinks it's a quarter inch or it's a half inch it's, it's all over the place right yeah. so having that kind of defined thing is, is really important and especially as you start to move more towards um the automation and robotics to the, the dimensions become even more important of what can be handled in the system and what's you know if you're off by an inch or maybe even a half inch it can kind of throw off that flow completely right um so in that regard too i mean you mentioning uh utilizing robotics to, to help your employees become more productive right um and a, and a lot of conversation at a lot of these these shows and, and on the podcast that i have with people too is around uh labor issues and, and trying to get more labor so i'm curious from from your perspective as uh, as a 3pl someone that's you know actively hiring or actively re- retaining hopefully retaining yes. uh labor right uh, uh what kind of struggles are you having are you having struggles what's it what's it like in the market yeah 
that was also another reason that we actually invested in the robots and, and moved towards automation was because back in COVID, it was hard to, to staff in, in our industry. And so robots have significantly helped that with not having to staff as many people, even though we still do need people. Uh, we do live in a college town, though, so that's a huge perk in the labor Ooh, market. Helps. Yes, yeah, there's yeah. 35,000 students enrolled seven minutes down the road. So yeah. um, like everybody, I think we have our highs and lows where, you know, it's a little bit hard to hire in the summer because college students go home and whatnot. Yeah. But for the most part, we do pretty well with our staffing. All right. Very interesting to hear. And it's always interesting here to hear like it's like those different regions and pockets yeah. of the country of like, you know, where is there a tough time getting labor? Where is there not? And it sounds like you have a really, really great uh, labor pool right, yeah. <laughs> right yeah. there in the college, especially as I'm sure you see some like seasonality too, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of yes. coincides with the school year, I can imagine. Right? Yes, it definitely does. Yeah. So very interesting stuff. Um, so Sarah, thank you so much for, for coming by and, and talking and, uh, and we'll be meeting next week, I guess, yes. too. Right. Um, so if people want to learn more about Webster Fulfillment, how can they do that? Yeah, they can follow me or connect with me directly on LinkedIn and shoot me a message and I'm Happy to schedule some time to talk with them, tell them a little bit about more of what we do, and hopefully have some partnerships down the road. All right. Sounds good. So you already follow her on LinkedIn. We're live on LinkedIn right now. So just go over there and follow Sarah. So thank you so much for for coming by and uh, have a safe trip back. Awesome. Yeah.